Hey everybody, welcome to today's weekly update. I'm going to be talking about the Azure news and also going to be talking about sound and how it's very important when you're recording videos and also podcasts. So stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back to this weekly update with myself, Sarah Lean. Um, as you can see, I'm back in my home office today. Um, last couple of weeks I have been outside enjoying the snow. We do have still some snow. It's turned into a bit of a slushy mess now. Um, but I wanted to be in the, o the office today because I want to talk about sound and I want to show you some of the things around my home office. So I thought it'd be more appropriate to do the, the video here. Um, but first, let's talk about the Azure News. Um, we are starting to see the Azure News build up, get more releases, more announcements being made um, as we kind of all get back into that working rhythm in 2021. Um, first bit of news is the Azure Site Recovery team have released an update roll up. Um, so I think that's number 53 they've released. Again, always good to keep in a cadence with these updates to ensure that you are staying relevant things are secure, things are the patches that have been made of any bugs that are in the software. So again, if you're running Azure Site Recovery, please do check it out and make sure you schedule in some time to apply that patch. Now for public preview um, releases, we have seen the Azure Log Analytics team release um, workspace, um, Log Analytics workspace in the UAE Central and I think one of the Japanese Azure data centers. Um, I think it may be Japan, Japan West, I think. Um, and that again is extra functionality and extra features that we're seeing within our Azure data centers in our region. So definitely check them out if you're having to utilize um, those data center regions for whatever needs. Um, these features are there and um, if you use them, then it's even better now that they're in that region or that data center that you're deploying your workloads into. Um, another public preview feature we've had is the Azure storage team have released something called um, resourced instance um, access roles. I think I've got that name right. And that's around making sure that you can secure your environment the right way. Um, we have virtual networks and we have IP address ruling that can stop or um, deny or allow um, certain other resource types to access um, your Azure storage. Um, but there are some resource types that don't actually work around that Azure um, virtual networking or IP address ruling. And this new instance resource type rule allows you to specify at a different level what can be allowed to access your Azure storage or not Azure, um, access your Azure storage. Some public preview, so it should be available to you today to have a look at, to test out, to um, check out the features and functionality. Again, because it's in preview, it's not necessarily supported within a production environment, but the team are very much hoping that people will use it, give them the feedback and let them know how they can iterate on that product and make it into the one that you want. So I'll be posting links to um, all these announcements in the description box, so make sure you check them out. If you are heading into that description box area, please do hit the like button and the subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, it always helps to surface up this kind of content to other people and, and, and broaden the audience. Same with the podcast, please do um, rate this podcast if you're listening to it. Again, it'll help with the metrics, it helps more people hear and listen to this podcast as well. And if you didn't know that it was available in a podcast format, it is on most of the podcast streaming services that we have nowadays so um, check that out as well. So what I wanted to talk about in the kind of portion about my news and what I'm doing is the sound um, and how important it is to video and even your podcast as well. Um, last week I was talking about how to get started, some of the video equipment, some of the setup that I have and I wanted to share what I've, I've found with sound and what I've done. So last week I talked about how I use my lavalier microphone to record into my mobile phone. Um, and yep, this lavalier microphone was about 20 or 30 pounds on Amazon. Um, and it's really lightweight. It doesn't require a lot of setup. I plug it into my phone. I can carry it around. Um, as you can see, I don't need any additional things onto my phone. I don't need uh, a mountain plate or a mountain jack. I don't need to carry additional batteries. I don't have to charge it. This is a traditional wired um, microphone. It just plugs in to my phone for me. 
Um, I know a lot of um, YouTubers, podcasters like to use some of the Rode equipment, so some of the Rode microphones, and yes, they look really good and they do sound quite good in some cases, um, but they are expensive and they, like I said, you need to have those additional things on top of them, so you need to have an extra tripod mount, a mounting jack, depending on what kind of camera equipment you're using, um, you might need to have an external battery. I know lots of people use, if you're watching this video, like GoPros to record their content, um, but trying to mount a Rode microphone on top of this um, is expensive because you need to buy a casing, you need to buy something else, you need to buy the microphone adapter as well for this, um, for some of the versions. Um, and also that Rode microphone, um, I think it is, is what we call phantom power. So it draws the power from the GoPro. So it can drain the battery, meaning you have less filming time, etc. So there's lots of considerations when you go down that route of having a more expensive, a bigger branded name microphone. That's why I love this lavalier microphone. If you've been watching my videos outside, you'll know that um, the sound quality has been quite good, even in the wind, even in the snow. Um, and yeah, hopefully it's quite good today in this kind of um, controlled environment inside my home office. But it's super important to have that good sound. A lot of people don't really want to listen to something or watch a video where the sound is really poor. No one wants to sit and have to turn up their volume to 25 or whatever it may be in order to hear whoever um, they're, they're watching um, speak. So it's very important to have that good sound. Um, and also when you're post editing your videos, I do a lot of post editing my videos and my podcast to make sure that the sound quality is good. I use a bit of software called Adobe Audition to, to do that, um, to try and normalise the loudness of my volume. So I make sure that I'm not massively shouting and then dipping down and it's really quiet and you have to adjust your volume accordingly. So you don't have to have your volume up at 25 and then halfway through the video, you have to put it down at six because I've shouted. Or at least I hope no one's having to do that on your videos or your podcast that you're listening to. Um, and I try and normalise that, I try and put it at a decent uh, level so that it's consistent so that you can have the volume set the same on your device that you're listening to me or watching me on for every video, for every podcast. The settings are replicated consistently throughout my videos and podcasts at the same settings. So if you sit there and binge watch some of my videos, some of my podcasts, you don't have to change the level of the volume. Um, and I think this is key as well when you're adding in things like bumpers and um, you're maybe adding in some music to the end or the beginning of your videos to advertise, you know, whatever you need to advertise or try and get your brand out there. I've found that some YouTubers and some podcasters do normalise their volume, their sound, but then they put in this bumper, they put in this kind of intro about music that is really loud and um, that's really impactful and really cool. But what I end up doing is having to lower the volume of my device because of the music and then I have to turn it back up for the person or I have to turn it up to hear a part of whatever the, the, the intro of the video. Then I have to turn it down because it's completely burst my eardrums when the intro music comes on. So normalise the part of your video where you're speaking but also normalise with any music that you're introducing into it as well. Um, and I think that's something that a lot of people forget. Sometimes something I've forgotten. So apologies if I've burst your eardrums with some of the intro music or the outro music. Um, but again, have a look at the software available. Like I said, I use Adobe um, Audition to um, edit my sound, but I learned how you could do it in um, Audacity as well. I thought it was pretty clunky on how you do it in Audacity. Um, but it, the capability is there on Audacity is a free bit of audio, audio um, recording and editing kind of software. So definitely check it out. I learned how to do the normalising, how to get and how to think about this audio from a friend, Alexander, um, in, in Sweden, who is the kind of founder and producer and host on the podcast Knee Deep in Tech. Um, Alexander does tons of Azure training courses, tons of data training courses. He also speaks at lots of events, so you may have found him. But if not, I'll post some links um, how you can get in touch with him as he has been a great inspiration to me making sure that my sound is correct. The other thing to think about is when you are in a controlled environment like your home office, 
or a room is to try and think about how you can make that echo that sometimes you have in a room better and, 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 and less pronounced for your sound recordings. Lots of people hide under, under their duvets um, or get lots of blankets when they do recordings, hide in um, their wardrobe. I know my, my colleague Christina Warren has been hiding in one of her closets um, recently while she's been trying to sort out a home office to get the best quality of sound. I know my, my colleague Sonia sometimes puts lots of blankets all over her office in order to try and reduce the sound and capture that sound. Um, I even saw, um, I don't know if anybody follows, but if you've ever heard of the Red Shepherdess or Hannah Jackson, who is big on Instagram as a, as a shepherdess, she sometimes appears on programmes like BBC Countryfile. She's been doing her audiobook. Um, she wrote her autobiography and she's been doing the recording of the audiobook to release. And she built a, a den in her, her house um, where it was just covered in blankets. And she spent three or four days huddled under blankets to make sure that sound was really quality. So there are some things that you can do within your home office to try and help. When we first moved in here about 18 months ago, the echo was quite bad in this room. Um, it was an empty room, it just had a carpet, my desk and my monitor and my laptop. Um, but over the time, I've built it up and, and tried to help with the sound. And what you actually see behind me here is a kind of sound if you're watching the video, if you're not watching the video on the podcast. Um, I have a sound board that kind of captures the sound behind me. I also have one in front of me and I have one to the right hand side of me as well, which has massively helped with the echo. Um, and that's that's something that I built. I did DIY. I could have went for some of the sound acoustic panels you can buy um, from music stores or even just some of the big retailers online. But I built these panels myself. Um, they are made out of just um, some kind of cotton fabric. There's sound insulation internally on them and then there's um, a wood frame round about them. So if you're watching the video, I'm going to start to show you some of this. Um, it might not make sense on the podcast, but bear with me um, while I show you what this is. So here we have the soundboard um, and all my little mascots on top of it. But what you can see is I actually have mounted it on the wall and there's a space there's a space between the wall and the kind of soundboard and if you see i'm pressing it in it's kind of soft and squidgy and what it's supposed to do is capture the sound grab that sound quality um, or the echo and just reduce it bouncing off the walls and stop it um, kind of reverberating around what i found when i was researching was you should mount them with this gap because the sound will go over, under, round um, and it will capture. So if it bounces off the wall, it will come back in and be captured on the inside because the, the panelling um, is there on both sides or, or the sound will just kind of get caught in amidst all this padding. Um, so yeah, I have three. I have them all at different heights and levels for me. Um, I, like I said, I've got the one behind me, I've got the one in front of me, which is higher than the one behind me, and I have one to the right-hand side that's mounted vertically, whereas the other two are mounted horizontally. Um, and I think that they actually do a great job in terms of capturing the sound. Um, please do let me know if I am talking absolute rubbish, but again, please do if you think that the sound is quite good, then let me know if there's any ways that I can improve it. Um, but yeah, that's just some of the tips that I think about when I'm doing my videos, when I'm doing my podcasts. Um, and, and it's something I just wanted to share with a lot of people in case it wasn't something that they thought about or they had thought about but weren't sure if it was worth investing in. I think it is worth investing in the time um, either to maybe put some sound boards within your home office and um, buy some if you need them. There are lots of expensive options out there that you can spend your money on, different variety. I went with the DIY ones because I wanted to have them as kind of art pieces, as picture frames. Um, if you're watching the video again, you'll you'll see that it's quite an interesting background. It's not just a plain white background. It's not a grey background where often some of the sound baffle boards that you buy are just plain and grey. I have something that I am quite um, happy with aesthetically. I like coming into my office and hopefully it's interesting for you to watch as well. So yeah, I've, I've rambled on about sound, but hopefully it's been helpful. Again, please do um, head to the description box for more information about any of the stuff that I've talked about. Please do head to the comment section and leave me some of your thoughts um, and I'll catch you in the next video.